It was a fairly sunny day. It was one of those fresh sunny days. But that's how I remember it, because for me it felt like a fresh start. I was full of hope for new beginnings. <laughs> and I got them, just not in the way I expected. Maria is just a very kind-hearted, friendly-natured individual, so she gave everybody the benefit of the doubt, regardless of, you know, creed, age, money. She's just a very innocent person. I told my mum more than she cared to know at times growing up. I would tell her lots of different secrets and she would be quite shocked. Celia, why are you telling me that? Leading up to meeting him, she seemed happy in herself. They met while she was walking the dog, so a really innocent encounter. He was quite charming towards her and, you know, may have flattered her, I don't know, and they became friends. And the first time I met him, he was with my mum on the couch and I thought he was cool seemed to make her laugh, which made me happy. He seemed really generous, and I, I thought, wow, my mum's actually met someone that seems really nice. I mean, he'd pick me up from school, he'd drive me around, he'd pick up all my friends, so I'd always be with him, I wouldn't really be with my mum. I understand that she lent him money and things like that, because she was quite a helpful person, she'd always try and help somebody. So they came to my house. I realised that he'd been drinking while driving. And um, we went for something to eat. The behaviour between them, as well as my mum, who seemed very nervous, very edgy, and just not herself. She was contradicting herself. She didn't feel like she could be in one place. She was very restless. And then he proceeded to pull out marijuana um, and something else, magic mushrooms or something from his pocket. And I said, well, don't be giving any of that to my mum. You know, you do what you like, but she doesn't need any of that stuff. And I took her aside and I said, mum, you know, it's time you need to get away from him. He's not good for you. He shortly after that did assault her um, and police were called and then he was then put in custody for what should have been four months, I think he was released early. Um, and she was given a panic alarm by the police and she was informed of his history, i.e. he was a convicted murderer, he'd murdered a previous girlfriend in Germany. Um, and she was very scared from what I understand. She didn't even want to go to court during the trial for the assault, which we believe was a bit more than just assault. Following those events, he's then subsequently released early. He told me my mum put him in prison, and I didn't put two and two together, I don't know how. And then he carried on picking me up from school, but not going out with my mum. He um, slowly crept back into her life, I think, by breaking into the house. The authorities turned off the panic alarm when he was released and it was on when he was in custody, which is a little bit dumb. I knew she wanted to communicate something. And I said to her, tell me, tell me what's going on. Tell me how you feel, tell me what you need, tell me how I can help. But she was scared for her life. So the police knew, they knew his background and they knew that she was very scared of him. They said that they would send someone immediately and they didn't. And yet they know that <clears throat> this guy as a convicted murderer had previously assaulted her. I don't even know that she was aware that the panic alarm was turned off. So she may have had the false illusion of being protected. Shortly after that, Maria goes missing. No one's heard from her. There was announcing my name wherever, in the, every shopping mall, 
and everyone was ringing me, scared for me. Then there was another one, Miss Peachy, please call the police immediately. And then there was one from my mum's friend called Jackie. She was her best friend. And uh, she sounded really worried, so I called her straight back. People ring me saying my, my road was closed down. And I, I started to get a feeling, I was like, what is going on? I had like 12 missed calls from her daughter, Celia, my niece, and I knew. I didn't know exactly what, but I knew something bad had happened. I just dro dropped through the phone, uh, screamed, shouted, swore at police officers, and then I just remember walking in complete silence. I screamed and I fell to my knees and I was just in absolute shock. It was the man I hang around with every day. It was my best friend in some in some aspects. It was the person. That was always mentoring me. It was the person that I'd smoke with. It was the person that I'd chill with. It was supposed to do everything with. Pick me up from school. So, mostly confusion. I mean, I'm angry is an understatement. Someone like him doesn't, doesn't feel kindness. Really difficult thing to understand the motive of why someone would kill another person. I think you need to be inside the mind of the person that actually did what he did. I think he had a way with words that somehow he was very manipulative and very good at getting in your head. On the penultimate day of them arresting him, they actually went to the property. He opened the door and they gave him a calling card to say that if you see her, call us. So her car's on the drive, her phone's not answering, she's been missing, and a convicted murderer opens the door and they give him a calling card. Ridiculous. And the irony is her body was like two feet away from that door. And not only that, you know, Bengi, who was 14 at the time, was in and out of that house. If my brother had found my mum, my brother would be dead. We're lucky in two ways that A, Bengi didn't get touched as well, and B, that they actually did arrest him the following day, because if, any, if ever there was an opportunity to escape, the police certainly gave him ample. I think I'm angrier at the police than I am at Mark. Mark's more confusion, but with the police, all the evidence is there, everything's there laid out on the table, but they didn't do anything, they didn't protect. I mean, they're here to save people's lives and protect us, but they didn't protect anything. It makes me feel like people aren't willing to put themselves out for people that are crying out for help. Our voice is really trying to reach the public to say to them, you know, you may not be affected by domestic violence now, but actually it's something that can span anybody's life at any given time. You know, we all have sisters, brothers, wives, you know, if I have a daughter, of course I want her to go out and meet a nice person. But I want to at least know in my mind that if she meets the wrong person, she's got an escape route or a police force that will care to care for her. I always think of her, but it's, just always, it's always playful, always playing. It's just cool. It's a nice way to remember. She is what's brought us together so close. Um, we laugh about her habits and mannerisms and little things that we've picked up from her or learnt. They're amazing kids. And they loved their mother, my sister. And <clears throat> we just know that the only thing that we can do to deal with this is to be strong. Although she's not here in physical form, I can't hug her, I can't kiss her, but I can still laugh with her in my head. It's cool. I enjoy it. It's good. It's getting there.
you know, celebrate their life rather than walk around in a dark cloud. And what happened to Maria was disgusting. <clears throat> but I won't let that take us out because then one person has wiped a family out <clears throat> and that can't happen. <clears throat>